It is time to get in the Word. Recap yesterday. Jealousy. 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 So we talked about us being jealous. We talked about man being jealous. All right, we talked about women being jealous. But now we're going to go into God being jealous. Because the Bible says God is jealous. All right, the first scripture I want to get is going to be Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So we know that the Lord is a jealous God. He is the only one. He is the only one to be feared. He's the only one to be worshipped. And this was the issue that the Israelites got into. Now let's go into Exodus 34, 14. This is the book of Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. God loves to be the only one because he is the only one. All right? He never, ever wants you to associate any other with him. He doesn't want you to take lords in addition to God. He doesn't want you to ascribe partners to him because he alone is the only one worthy of worship. Now you will know that this is the wickedness that the children of Israel got into. This was their issue. They wanted to be like the other nations and they wanted a man to rule over them, not knowing in doing so that they was allowing man worship. All right. So let's go on to another scripture. Proving that our Lord God is jealous. This is going to be Deuteronomy 4, 24. Let's read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 24. For thou, Lord thy God, is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. God is an all-consuming fire, and he's a jealous God. He doesn't want nobody next to him. I want to bring out a scripture in Isaiah 42, 8. It is on the screen, Isaiah 42 and 8. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. All right, so God is letting you know right now. He's not giving his glory to nobody else. Neither my praise to graven images. Now that can go twofold. Speaking of how many people worship Jesus as he being raised from the dead. And they have this image of Jesus. They have this image of Jesus Christ on the cross, which is false. Not only is it false, he even looks false. All right, he's not even white. So the whole image thing has been a total corruption to all humanity. He said he will not give his praise to graven images. And we know that can go into dead images. God is the only one. So now with that being established, let's go on more to some scriptures of God being jealous. Let's go to Deuteronomy 5 and 9. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. 
All right. So the book of Deuteronomy literally means repeated law. It is the repeated law. So what we hear in Deuteronomy chapter 5 is the same thing we hear in Exodus 20. There's a few things, few minor differences, but mostly it is the same thing in Exodus 20. So let's get Deuteronomy 6.15. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 15. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. All right, he's letting you know. He doesn't want you to associate anyone with him. Not one person. And we're going to keep going. I want to go to Joshua 24, 19. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 19. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions, nor your sins. There is not one scripture in the entire Bible that is worded that way. It's not worded that way. Why? Because this is Joshua speaking. And we know that Joshua is a type and shadow of Jesus. So when he said you cannot serve the Lord, he was basically letting you know that there's going to come a day when people are going to want to serve Joshua. They're wanting to serve Jesus. That's why he said you can't serve the Lord. For he is a holy God. All right. He is a jealous God. And then it says he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. This idol worship, this sun worship, is something that the Most High detests. And as many scriptures that these Israelite camps are bringing out against Esau, 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 I really believe this is God's hatred that he has for people who worship Jesus as God. Because when we say God, we say Elah, and when we say Jesus, in Arabic, we say Isa. All right? So I truly believe with all my heart that God hates when you worship the creation more than the creator. Now, these camps are literally saying Jesus is the creator, which is a total lie. I want to go over to some scriptures where prophets literally saying they was jealous for the Lord. This is going to be 1 Kings 19.10. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. All right. He said it again. Let's go to verse 14. <laughs> and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have take, I mean, have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. All right. So the prophet is saying that he was jealous for the Lord's sake. That was Elijah. All right. Elijah is a Tishbite. He was of the strangers. He was a prophet to the Israelites. Now, when we look at another story, I want to look at a story in the Bible. All right, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, 24. I have it on the screen. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 24. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. Okay, so some sons... Or a son was making God's people sin. Let's keep going. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord now, would th slay them. Now, that's exactly what I was bringing out yesterday. If you sin against man, there's hope. But when you sin against the Most High, and the sin that I'm talking about when you sin against the Most High is the sin 
of associating someone who is not God with God. That's when you are interfering with God's jealousy. Let's go to 1 Samuel 3.13. Let's keep going on the screen. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. All right, so if you don't put that thing in check, all right, you ascribe in partners with God, if you do not put that thing in check, it is going to destroy you. So we have a summary of what's going on. This is the summary. Eli was warned that his children was messing up. And just like most of our parents, when the children are messing up, the parents want to give them that lip service. They want to give them that lip service. And this is exactly what Eli did. All right? He was supposed to put his children to death. He was supposed to kill the fatted calf. All right? He was supposed to be like Abel, bringing the firstling of his flock and killing it. But he did not kill his sons. He did not put that thing in check. And it destroyed his house. Not only did his two sons die, but the ark of the Most High was captured. And Eli died as a result. So you have to put that thing in check. I want to go on to 1 Samuel 15.22. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. I challenge all you Christians who is so full of sacrifice and offerings. All you talk about is how Jesus died, how Jesus was crucified. How he paid for your sins on the cross, on the cross. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. All right? And this sun worship, it is fueled by the greatest lie going across the world is that Jesus died for your sins. All right? So let's keep going. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. All right, so the Lord rejected King Saul from being king. And this was a big, big disappointment to the nation of Israel because this was their first king. All right, he was just anointed king a couple chapters ago. All right, and he's already rejected. Why? Because God is jealous. He doesn't want you to associate anything with him. And we read in the Bible how it was a wicked thing for the children of Israel to even ask for a king. Let's get that in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 17. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 17. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of the Lord, in asking you a king. It was a wicked thing to ask for a king because God was their king. Now I'm going to show you a scripture proving that God was their king. This is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 8, starting off at verse... Five. This is the book of First Samuel, chapter 8, verse 5. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. All right. But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me. That I should not reign over them. All right, so who did they reject? God. They rejected God from reigning over them. That's why we just read in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 17, that it rained. It was a sad day. It was as if God was crying that day. 
because they rejected the Most High from being king. And God is jealous. We're going to keep going, and I want you to read 1 Samuel 15, 26. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. All right. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Wow. So this is where jealousy really, really set in on King Saul. Because God literally told him through the prophet, I'm about to give the kingdom to somebody who is better than you. All right. Those words literally tore Saul's heart apart. And the way God worded it, and we went over this. The way God worded it, this is a twofold scripture, and it can go with Matthew 21, 43. It can go with Deuteronomy 32, 21. It can go with Romans 10, 19. It can go with 2 Ezra chapter 1 and verse 24 and down. So let's keep going with verse 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people, and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. Wow, King Saul blew it, he blew it, he wanted to be honored in front of the people, because he blew it, the kingdom was taken from him, and this was after God gave him another chance. He couldn't kill the Amalekites. He wanted to offer sacrifice, sacrifice. Don't that sound like the Christian church? Don't that sound like the Christians? Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for my sins. All they talk about is sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. When God is not about sacrifice, God is about obedience. So now we went through that, and we'll get back up to where we was at. I want to go to another story in the Bible. This is going to be Jonah, chapter 4, verse 1. It's on the screen. It's the book of Jonah, chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city, and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, and sat under it in the shadow, till he might see what will become of the city? All right, I'm going to stop you right there. So, does anybody know why Jonah was mad? Because God saved the people of Nineveh. Now, these were not just Israelites. These were people of Nineveh. Now, we know we had the northern kingdom who was carried captive into Nineveh. And we had some Israelites among them. But mostly these were all heathens. All right, now keep going. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. All right, so this gourd is like a small tree. All right, it was like some type of tree. Some people say it was like a vine. All right, but in other words, it was something to get that hot sun off of him. Because that sun was beating him up. Alright. So now, let's keep going. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day. And it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted and wished in himself to die. And said, it is better for me to die than to live. Alright, so this man got so mad. So mad that God, the real God, is merciful. 
He's a merciful God. He doesn't want nobody to perish. And I'm going to show you right here in this Bible that God cares about people, not just Israelites. So let's keep going. And God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the Lord? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. So he literally having an attitude. Yeah, I got a right to be angry. Even to death. Because Jonah did not want to go there and preach. Because he was mad at Nineveh. He hated Nineveh. Our people hated Nineveh. And he wanted them to die. Let's keep going. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. All right. Keep going. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city wherein are more than six score thousand persons that I cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? Wow. Now you just heard it for your own self. God was like, shouldn't I not spare this city that has all these people in there? And cattle? Hey, why are you mad? Because the real God is the merciful. And that's what the Christians, they hate. They hate that the real God is the merciful. And there's a scripture in Romans 10, 19. We're going to come back to this. But I want someone to get the scripture in Romans 10, 19. This is the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that saw me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. That's the truth about Israel. Israel was wicked. Israel was stubborn. Israel had the one true God. And they literally was worshiping idols. They had the one true God as king. And what was they doing? They was wanting to be like the other nations to have flesh rule over them. To have a man rule over them. Now if we go back to the story of Jonah, we'll see that this story is a type and shadow of the story of Jesus. Okay? God is exposing the wickedness of Christianity. And how they worship and serve the creation more than they serve the creator. Okay? There was a covering for a while. There was a covering of, the, of this whole thing. There was a covering of this whole thing. But now, God has removed the tree. He's removed the gourd. And now, the sun is against the Christian. Okay? God is revealing the wickedness of Christianity. It is sun worship. It is the golden calf. All right. This same story we see in the story of Cain and Abel. Cain brought the fruit from the ground. What is that? That's the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He tried to bring that to the Father, and God had no respect for that. But God did have respect for Abel because what did Abel do? He found that perfect little lamb and he killed it. He said, you know what? This is not God. This is not God. And when you understand the truth about God is that he is jealous. He's like a jealous man. So let's get that scripture in the book of Proverbs that brings out the jealousy of a man. This is going to be Proverbs Chapter 6, verse 34. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. All right, think about this. You have a man. He is married to one woman. Let's just say one woman for now. All right? He has one wife. All right? And even if he had four wives... Okay, he's one man, all right? Now, just think, if these women go to another man, all right, what is going to happen? Jealousy is going to take root in his heart, and he is going to go over, and he's going to put that man out of his misery. That's what this scripture is talking about. Read that again. 
For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He's not going to spare in the day of vengeance. And do you think that the Most High is going to allow you to be married to somebody else when you're supposed to be married to the one true God? He's not going to let that slide. God is jealous because God right now is exposing the wickedness of you associating anything with him. And he's just like the jealous husband. He is not going to spare in the day of vengeance. All right. So we have that scripture. And I want to go to the book of James because God put this spirit in us. All right. To let us know that he is the only one. Let's get James 4 and 5. This is the book of James chapter 4 verse 5. Do you think that the scripture is set in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Alright, so let's go to another translation. This is going to be the God's word translation. It is on the screen. Do you think this passage means nothing? It says, the spirit that lives in us wants us to be his own. God put a spirit in every person on the planet all right and that spirit is for us to see him only as the one true god all right so with that being said i want to give one more scripture on the jealousy of god and this is going to be a scripture we already read i want deuteronomy 615 to be reread this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 15. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. I suggest you to repent right now. If you're a Christian, and most of us all come out of this Christian sect, where we all worship in Jesus, and we all put more on him than he is, all right, I encourage you right now to repent. All right. The word of God is pricking your heart. And right now, you know what you need to go do? You need to take that little lamb and you need to go and slaughter it. And you need to let it know that he is God and God will not associate any partners with him. All right. You need to put your sons in check or guess what? God is going to put you in check. Checkmate. Let's go to our Bible reading. 